Hi guys. So I'm back. Um, I'm Amber. If you haven't seen my first video, I actually talked a little bit about my experience with breast implant illness. And so today I actually wanted to walk you through uh, not only the symptoms of breast implants, uh, breast implant illness, in case you are maybe wondering if you might have the same condition. So um, last week, if you joined me, um, I talked a little bit about the fact that I had breast implants for four years. I got them in 2013. I was super, super, super healthy at the time. Um, and so basically my, uh, health just slowly declined basically year after year until, um, last year in 2017, my health just plummeted. So I actually have a list. So, um, I wanted, and actually on the last video, I didn't talk about the fact that I have two websites. So I have a blog um, and that's just kind of, like I said, I used to kind of heal and get through this process of going through chronic illness. And um, I also have another website um, called Life Since Explant. And that is actually where I, um, I sit down with other women who have gone through exactly what I've gone through and I tell their stories. So I kind of just get to know them for like three weeks. We talk, I do really in-depth uh, interviews. And so I tell their stories. So if you're looking for more information just on hearing other women's stories like mine, um, I would definitely check that out. Um, my blog is listed in, sorry, my hair is driving me nuts. This is a live video. This is how this stuff works, right? Um, so I have my blog listed and you'll be able to see license explant in the projects there. But so I recently did a one year explant update on my website. And so I actually do have my symptoms list. So I'm going to pull that up um, and just talk a little bit about um, kind of where they started and um, how they progressed. Um, and I'm hoping that this is helpful for anyone that may think that they are um, experiencing breast implant illness or just having a bad reaction because here is something that is super, super, super important. Um, my symptoms, like I said, progressively got worse and worse. So there was a point about two years into having implants that um, I had heard the term breast implant illness. I didn't read anybody's story. It wasn't anything like that. Um, there's a lot more now on the internet, um, and I'll actually be doing a video in a couple of weeks, actually talking about where you can find support and things like that. Um, so I had actually heard the term. I had looked up all of the symptoms, which there's like 70, about 70 ish, um, different symptoms that they, um, have listed for breast implant illness. So I looked it over and I had kind of thought, well, gee, I have like, you know, half of those symptoms, um, but I just didn't take the term breast implant illness seriously. And so this is what I really, really try to get across to people is that it can get so, so much worse, which you'll kind of see when I talk about um, my symptoms and how they progressed. So if you are thinking that you possibly are having some type of reaction or you have been suffering with chronic illness since you got your implants in, um, the sooner you get them out, the better. And I know, I mean, I've been through it. I've talked to so many women that have been through this. It is not an easy decision to come by, but I hope that me going through these symptoms and explaining them to you will give you just a better um, idea and make you feel more confident in making that decision to um, explant um, or do a breast implant removal surgery. So um, one, I'm just gonna go through these symptoms here. I have them on my phone. So um, number one, rapid weight gain with no lifestyle changes. This was huge for me. So. Um, I was very active before I got my implants and I did slow down my activity. However, like no change in my diet, um, nothing super drastic, um, other than maybe not hiking as much or, um, things like that. I gained 60 pounds within probably 10, not even 10 months of my surgery. Um, and 
I have a tendency to just kind of, I, I did totally blame myself for that. I did not associate it with my breast implants at all, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to be rapid weight gain either. I've talked to a lot of women who just had um, an inability to lose weight. Um, no matter what they did. I, um, if you go to license explant stories, um, I have a nurse, I have a couple of um, women that I've wrote their stories that were like total fitness fanatics and were unable to lose weight um, or really, really easily gained weight. I had rapid weight gain because I wasn't really like exercising a whole bunch. I wasn't into any kind of like super fitness program or anything like that. Um, Daily muscle pain and weakness was definitely one of my, um, this was something that I attributed to weight gain, honestly, I attributed it to like being out of shape. So I had a lot of muscle weakness. Um, that was a symptom that I easily, easily ignored. Um, and so a lot of these symptoms that I'm going to talk about have, oh, I think I can look at chats here. Um, why did you slow down your activity, physical limitation or lifestyle change? So um, I slowed it down. I always, it's so funny because I always blamed the fact that I got my, um, breast implant surgery and then I was down for a few weeks, right? Just like any surgery. And then I just kind of, everyone always asks me, you know, do you enjoy your implants? I'm like, well, I kind of just got out of shape after I got them. I never connected the two. Um, over time, fatigue set in really quickly and, um, that just became regular, um, joint pain was probably one of my first symptoms, um, and muscle weakness as well. So, um, those are a lot of underlying some uh, reasons why my activity slowed down and my lifestyle changed a little bit. Um, so I can't really say any particular reason, but I know that a year or two in, I wasn't working out and I wasn't doing anything like that because I was so tired all the time and weak. My joints hurt like crazily. So I'm going to keep going down the list. Um, severe body and joint pain. So this is, this is very important because a lot of people I talk, not everybody has joint pain, but it is a very, very common symptom with breast implant illness. And this was something that I had within a couple of months. And it's bizarre to me now that I just didn't like think at all that it was connected. And I really was kind of, you know, I, I was, like I said, I was really young. I was in shape and I was having weird joint pain, like in my elbows and my hands, um, my neck, my back, which I attributed to the extra weight. Um, these are the implants that I had. <laughs> they're 500 CC. So they're really, really heavy. So I just figured, Oh, achy back. That's like all normal part of, you know, getting breast implants. Um, but the pain that I had was super, super weird and very pinpointed in different areas of my body. I have a spot like on the top of my foot that was really, really painful all the time. I had calluses from rubbing it. Like, um, I, I don't know, I'm not the type of person to go to the doctor and I, I tend to lean more towards holistic, uh, uh, like holistic, I don't know, health, I guess, of trying to treat things naturally. Um, so, you know, I just figured, oh, I'm out of shape. Really, I, I, a lot of these symptoms I plain out just ignored and blamed on myself because I figured I was just out of shape. Um, drowsiness, fatigue. Now that's all stuff that so I was a little kind of backstory um, on me. I used to run a preschool out of my home. So I'm a homeschooling mom. I was super, super active with my daughter. Um, and I had a really, really active business. I had like six toddlers around me all the time. So the fatigue and the drowsiness that I had after work, like um, I would just, I just figured it was par for the course. Like, well, I chased toddlers around for a living. So, you know, um, I just really didn't give myself enough credit um, with fatigue. And I tell, I'll, I tell this to anybody, and I know a lot of people now who have chronic illness, not just breast implant illness, but um, a lot of people say, you know, oh, well, everyone in America has fatigue. You know, we're all fatigued. Well, it's not really normal. So uh, I just don't want anyone to ignore these symptoms because there are women that had have had breast implant illness um, but only maybe had 20 symptoms. For me, I had about 70 plus symptoms. 
Um, but some of them, and they all, and the ones that had fewer symptoms, they got better after explant. So, you know, just saying fatigue is normal. It's not normal. Um, even if everyone has it, it's not normal. And it, and that coupled with other symptoms definitely should be alarming. Something's wrong. Your body, you know, um, shouldn't be that tired. So insomnia, that was huge. I would never, ever, ever sleep. Um, probably about two years in, um, after getting implants is when I had really, really debilitating insomnia. Um, like I said, I was running a preschool, so I needed to sleep and I would basically get one to two hours a night, um, and then just crash after work immediately. Um, I had, I'm trying to go through the early symptoms. Um, I didn't have... Let me see. I had infertility pretty early on. Um, that was something that I definitely, hi, when were you able to get support from others or learn from others' experiences? Seems like it would be great for you to have known you're not alone. Yes. Um, support was a huge thing. I'm actually going to go into detail on a, on a separate video all about support because what happens with people um, that you know, as I'm going down this list, like I said, I had over 70 symptoms. Um, at the end of 2000 or the middle of 2017, right before I got my explant, I was so, so sick. And like I said, I'm normally a more holistic approach. I don't go to the doctor for everything. And at the beginning of last summer, I was desperate. I went to every doctor, got every test. They were testing me for multiple sclerosis. They were doing brain scans because um, as you'll see, some of these more scary symptoms I had were um, slurred speech, facial numbness. Um, I had um, incontinence, which is super embarrassing to talk about, but it definitely was a problem. I had severe, severe migraines, um, extreme muscle weakness. Um, and that's why I really want it express how important it is to catch these things early on because the earlier symptoms I've talked about fatigue and joint pain, things like that, that I attributed to other things, weight gain, um, I attributed to other things, they got so much worse. And so when I started kind of, like I said, going to the doctor, getting all these tests done, trying to figure out what was wrong with me, because there was zero doubt that there was something really, really wrong with me at this point last year um, when I was getting more of the more scary neurological symptoms. And I will tell you this, it was really, really difficult to find support. And I found most of my support online. Um, it is really something that people have a hard time understanding. They have a hard time believing it. Um, and so... I mean, I had people to my face tell me that, you know, not to my face, maybe not, but I, there was a lot of people that doubted the things that I was saying, um, and going through what I went through each step of the way through every test. And, um, as my health just slowly declined, the only people that really understood were the people that were living in my home. So my husband, my daughter, um, and really, really close family members that were with me and saw how sick I was, um, so support is huge. And I do want to say there are amazing support systems. And that's kind of why I started Licensed Explant Stories, to tell other women's stories in just a regular kind of way to help people understand that this does happen um, to very, very normal people. Um, a lot of times when I think um, there's a lot more awareness about it now, there's a lot more people talking about it. But even just a year ago when I was going through this, um, it wasn't as common for people to talk about. So um, support was huge. And that's why I want to dedicate an entire video to just talking about that. Um, so um, again, in the beginning, uh, hormones was definitely a thing. Infertility, um, I had gone to see, I was probably one of the only other doctors that I had gone to because I was having um, hormonal menstrual issues. Um, and they're really, really severe, um, totally not normal. Um, they put me on different types of medications, nothing worked. They kind of just made me worse. Um, so that hormonal imbalances, you know, I thought maybe I had a thyroid issue, but all my thyroid numbers were always normal, you know? So um, 
those were kind of the um, beginning symptoms for the first um, two or three years, uh, probably. Yeah, two or three years. It was the third year that I really got sick. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, that. I started to develop a severe skin sensitivity. Um, and it's so funny because the picture I put in the, in the post of this video or in the um, little you know, thumbnail of this video, I have this because this was probably one of my favorite um, things to wear. I had very limited things that I could wear. Um, and it's um, something called allodynia. And that's something that a lot of people with chronic illness suffer with. Um, and it was coupled with um, severe light sensitivity. I would get very, very bad migraines and aura migraines. So it would obstruct my vision, which was super scary. The first time I ever had that, that was actually an earlier symptom that I had um, migraines and things like that and aura migraines, just these really unexplainable things that were happening that just kind of happened here and there. Um, and I didn't really think was anything serious. Um, so last year when things kind of got worse, um, I had, I'm going to kind of go down my list a little bit more, um, severe inflammation. And this actually, this inflammation happened immediately. And looking back on pictures, um, I don't know if I have too many pictures on my website, but um, maybe I need to update a post or something and, and show those pictures. But you can immediately see within weeks, um, I had a lot of inflammation um, in my chest, in my face, um, and that went down immediately after explant. Um, so yes, severe inflammation. Um, let's see, last year, I think I mentioned uh, facial numbness, severe anxiety. Um, I have suffered with anxiety a little bit, but this was a totally different type of anxiety. Um, I had a lot of confusion and this is where things got really scary with the neurological stuff. And this is why they were testing me for multiple sclerosis and different neurological um, disorders because um, I think I went in to the ER one day and like my entire face was drooping down this side. Um, my husband and my roommate at the time were like, we need to go in because you know, there's seriously something, you know, visibly wrong with me. It was like for once, some, it was something that somebody could see because a lot of these things, uh, which goes kind of back to the support issue um, is that they're invisible. People don't really see them. Um, and so it's really up to you to be an advocate for yourself. Um, hair loss, I had a lot of um, just thinning of my hair. Um, that is getting better. Um, really, really severe reflux, um, which I never had before. I had um, like painful bloating that was just insane. I had no, uh, I never had anything like that before um, to the point where like there was a couple of nights when it first started happening that I was really scared and it was wrong you know, thought about going to the hospital. Um, so blurry vision, vision disturbances. So I, I talked about the aura migraines where I had vision disturbances, but um, also during really bad, towards the very end, right before I explanted, um, I would go blind in one eye when I had really bad migraine, which was terrifying to say the least. Um, what else? Um, a lot of post-nasal drip. This is something that's really, really common with a lot of uh, women that have breast implant illness, um, like metallic taste. Um, I think I talked about severe sensitivity to light and sound, um, heart palpitations, um, slow, slow muscle recovery. Um, this was towards the, the very end when anything I would do, this is more when I would have um, like fibromyalgia type symptoms which is something that I still struggle with right now. Um, this is something I will say a lot of um, women expect to get better immediately. And some women do um, after explant, but for a lot of us who had a very, very, very long list of symptoms, it's going to take time for your body to detox what's gone on. So, um, so last year um, I was noticing any type of activity I would do um, hiking, even a small hike, or even just like an excursion for the day out with kids. Um, I was needing days to recover. Um, I would have, um, uh, last year I had swollen lymph nodes under my arms. Um, I had lesions and like 
um, I had a lot of skin issues. So, um, on my, I've always had very, very clear skin. So, um, last year I would get really, really horrible, like pussy, um, psoriasis type, um, stuff going on with my face. Um, and so that was something that I had never experienced before. Um, let me see numbness, tingling. Um, those are very, very common symptoms that a lot of women have. Um, chest discomfort, shortness of breath, um, pain or burning sensation around the implant. If you have pain around your implant and any of these other symptoms, this is a really, really good clue that you may have breast implant illness and need to get them out. Um, there is a specific type of cancer. Um, it's a cancer of the immune system. It's called BIALCL. And it is a specific type of cancer of the immune system that you can only get from breast implants, you guys. So, um, and a lot of symptoms of breast implant illness um, go hand in hand with this type of cancer as well. And that is specific to textured implants. I mean, the company has even come out saying, we know this is happening. Um, that's a whole other story. Um, so, um, I had a lot of muscle cramping. I mean, I was basically last year before I got my implants out, I was mostly bedridden. Um, it was terrifying. It was lonely. It was really, really sad. I normally get kind of emotional talking about this, but I'm trying to keep it together, um, because it was a really, really difficult time. Um, I had, so last year, basically everything hurt all the time. Um, it was very, very rare for me to be out of bed. Um, very, very rare for me to even leave the house, do anything. It had to be on a really, really good day. Um, severe like memory loss. I would, um, misspeak all the time. Um, my words would jumble. I would, you know, severe, severe brain fog. Um, and definitely something that, um, was very, very apparent last year was like leaky gut type symptoms. And this is something that a lot of women with breast implant illness are experiencing. Also another thing that can be overlooked really easily. Um, and this has to do with um, a lot of the ingredients that they have in this. So a lot of people actually think this is just silicone and that's not true. There are a ton of other um, active ingredients um, in the outer shell and the outer shell um, is what has direct contact with your body. And of course that sits on top of your vital organs, lymphatic system and, and all that. So the leaky gut um, is a very, very um, prominent symptom for most women like me. Um, so I can't, I haven't been able to get through the whole list, um, but symptoms of fibromyalgia, um, huge. That is something that, um, is very, very common. That was actually one of the first things I thought I had. I'm like, okay, well, it's got to be fibromyalgia. That's what makes the most sense. And plus, because every test was coming back normal. Um, toxic shock syndrome um, or symptoms, symptom like, um, like that. Um, feeling like, this is a symptom they put on there, feeling like you were dying. It seems kind of like a strange symptom. But um, if you've experienced breast implants illness or silicone toxicity, you will know exactly what that means. Um, it's very scary. I've talked to a lot of women who, um, yeah, it's just, it's really hard to explain what all of these symptoms combined day to day um, feels like. It's very, very scary. And that's why I really, really stress the fact that if you have even symptoms, and, and for me, I had symptoms right away. Um, like I said, the, the few minor symptoms, I guess, um, I had those immediately, um, discard them as something completely different, not related to my breast implants. Um, some women literally never have a symptom until five years in, six years in. So even if you've had your breast implants for 10 years and you're like, well, I, you know, my symptoms didn't start till two years ago. Um, it, the thing is about breast implants, um, and the lack of testing that they do, um, and the lack of research that they do, we really don't know what they're doing inside our bodies. Not only that, we all have such d different body chemistry that these symptoms are just vast and different and come in different orders. Um, there's a lot of similarities, but that's what I'm saying. 
it's really, really important to just be mindful and to be aware of just the, the small symptoms. Because if I would have, when I heard about breast implant illness in, you know, two, three years ago, before I got super sick, um, I think I would have had a lot less um, permanent or semi-permanent damage um, would have been a lot easier for me to heal after explant. So um, I'm a year post explant and I will do another video talking about exactly how I'm doing now um, and kind of what licensed explant is kind of why I named my website that, <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah. So skin flaking, dry skin, um, dry hair, brittle nails, all things that have like gotten so much better since I explanted um, skin rashes, ear ringing. Oh, sudden food intolerances and allergies. That's huge. So um, a lot of people just attribute that to getting older. A lot of these things people attribute to getting older. So um, let me see if there's any other here that are important. Oh, this is a symptom. I didn't have this symptom. I had almost every symptom, but um, a lot of women experience like white fingertips and I, there's a specific name for it, but, um, lots of numbness in the hand. So actually I didn't mention this last year when I got really, really sick, I had to stop using my phone. I couldn't hold my phone. I couldn't type. Um, I couldn't use a computer. I couldn't use a mouse. My hands were, um, curling up in on themselves. Um, like this, that's why we thought multiple sclerosis or the doctors were testing me for that. I had a lot of symptoms similar to MS, which is super terrifying and super scary. Um, and again, if I would have paid more attention, um, listened a little bit more, looked more into breast implant illness before all these terrifying symptoms happened, um, I think I would have been a lot better off. And so, um, yes, there are so many more symptoms that, um, I honestly don't even think I could get through all of them. Um, but there is a full list. If you go to www.breastimplantillness.com, there is literally everything there that you need to know as far as um, resources. Um, it's kind of just a resource page, so there's not a whole lot of connecting to do. But if you're looking for information specifically or you have questions like, I'm not kidding you, I have I've spoken to so many different women. Um, I tell these stories. So I've um, interviewed a ton of women that have gone through similar situations. I like to just be a support. Um, truly, that was one of the most difficult things about this experience, regardless of all the physical symptoms that I was experiencing, was um, the emotional aspect of it and not feeling like you had support or people that understood um, the severity um, that these severity of illness that these things can cause. Um, they, they don't make everybody sick, um, but they, the people that they do make them sick, it doesn't get any better. Um, it doesn't um, go away. It's not going to be healed by diet and exercise. It's not going to be healed by taking different supplements. You, you have to remove these and you have to remove them properly. So I think I have another question I'm going to check and then I'm going to pop out. Um, this is really helpful and great guide for people who need support. Yes, you're welcome. I'm so, so happy to do this. I'm really thankful to Zubia for helping me get on here and just reach a new audience um, and and really just put myself out there for support. Um, it's it's a really big deal when you're going through this. It's, it's so terrifying. Um, it really is. And that's kind of why I started my blog and, and why I started creating my own community. Um, and not only, there's not just me, I will we'll go into this in a later video, but there are tens of thousands, there's hundreds of Facebook groups, there's so many women that are experiencing this. There are tens of thousands of women getting explanted every year. Um, so you were so not alone. Um, and so I hope that I can just be um, present and be you know, share my story and kind of help anyone else who might be curious or terrified or searching for answers. Cause I know I was doing that for so long. So anyway, I better hop out of here cause I'm super tired and I'm ready for bed, <laughs> but thank you everybody who came by. And, um, I will definitely be doing a few more videos, um, talking about how I'm doing since X plant. So it's been a year 
in um, my symptoms have gone down from 70 plus down to 22. So um, I still have lingering, lingering, lingering symptoms, but compared to where I was last year, you guys, it's absolutely insane. And so I can't wait to share that with you and kind of give anybody um, who is nervous about explant or considering it, just give them the encouragement that they need to say, yes, this is absolutely going to make you better. Um, and I also will be doing one on support and, um, yeah. So anyway, thank you. I hope you guys all have a good night.